Hi everyone, my name is Luca. I work at Forest Technologies and today I'm going to walk you through a complete continuous delivery pipeline demo. This demo will go from the commit of new code to the deployment of an application into production. I will go through many DevOps best practices. But before that, let's talk quickly about the value of achieving DevOps can bring to your company. First of all, DevOps will increase the pace at which you are able to release new code and your reactivity to market changes. This will be achieved by shortening your development cycles and having an automated delivery pipeline able to deploy new code in minutes instead of days. Another benefit of DevOps is an improved consistency. Automation will help you to eliminate human error from all the repetitive tasks that a computer can do without the help of a human. And finally, DevOps will also help you to deliver higher quality software because releasing new devs and ops from all the tedious tasks that have been automated means that they will have more time to dedicate to other, more important tasks. The cultural shift that comes with DevOps will also take part in improving quality. By breaking down the barriers between the development and operations teams, we will increase the technical ability of everyone in your organization. Lastly, monitoring will participate in this by giving you clear information on the state of your applications and helping you to know where you can improve. Now, let's talk about the demo. The application we deploy is a simple Java web version of Conway's Game of Life, made by Wokaleo. On this picture, you can see the full delivery pipeline that has been automated. You can see that I'm going to use Jenkins as the orchestration tool. It will be the central tool which will link all the others together and automate our process. I'll start by pushing new code to a repository that will be automatically built using Nibu. After that, tests will be run using Sonoku. Sonoku is an only one platform capable of aggregating test results from many different tools, such as JRE, JCoCo, or Findbugs. It solves the hassle of having multiple reports from many different tools publishing them in only one easy-to-use dashboard. I'll show you all of this in a few minutes. After having run the tests, the snapshot artifact will be pushed to a Nexus repository, so it is versioned and available later to be deployed. I'll be using a Docker image in order to have the whole application built on CAT server in one single package. This way it can be deployed on any server very easily. Then, test servers will be provisioned on AWS using Terraform, powerful infrastructure management tool. The image will be pulled from an Nexus repo. Once it is done, a stress test will be run with JMeter, simulating hundreds of users using the application, and we'll be able to see the results on Jenkins. After validating the system tests, the release image will be pushed to Nexus, and the production servers will be provisioned. Here, we don't really have an infrastructure running, really, but if we had, Ansible will be there to swap the old container with a new one. This is necessary because Terraform isn't really meant to update software, but rather to build infrastructure. And once all of this will be done, our new revision will be successfully deployed. Here, you can see the infrastructure that I'll be using during this demo. On my PC, I have three containers running, one with Jenkins, another with Sonocube, and the last one with Uchiwa, which is a monitoring dashboard for Sensor. Then, on AWS, I already have the Nexus repository running with a sensor server and an AppDynamics controller. Sensor and AppDynamics are powerful monitoring tools that I'll use with the application. Lastly, I'll provision three instances of the application and will set up an AWS Elastic Load Balancer to serve requests to them. That's all for the explanations. Uh, let's now jump into the demo and I'll explain more as we go. Here's the Jenkins dashboard, where you can see that I already have several jobs set up, which will be run during the pipeline. This is the Sonocube dashboard, where we'll be able to see the test results. Here you can see Nexus repositories, where the artifact of the new version will be uploaded. And this is Uchiwa. Uchiwa is a free dashboard that can be used with Sensu. Sensu's dedicated dashboard is only available in the enterprise version. I use Sensu to monitor the health of the infrastructure. Here, I pre-configured two health checks. Sensu checks are based on common return codes. This allows you to monitor virtually everything on your machines. One is measuring the CPU usage, 
and another one is making sure the container on which is installed the application is running. And here you can see that Echiva is currently connected to the Sensu server running on AWS. This is now the AppDynamics dashboard where we'll be able to get some information on the running application. This is where the application will be displayed once it is running. AppDynamics is a tool used to monitor an application by instrumenting its code. And finally, here are the AWS console where you can see the Sensu, Nexus, and AppDynamics instances running. Let's now start the pipeline by pushing a new commit to the repository. I am now on the pipeline job page. You can see the stage view where there's a previous build display. Jackie is pulling the Git repository I just pushed to every minute to see if there was any change made. We'll see a new pipeline build starting in a few seconds. Here it is. Let's watch the console output coming from the build. You can see that Maven is now building the new version. Maven has now finished to build the application and is running tests. Once they will be finished, we'll be able to see the results on the SonarCube dashboard. While the build is being uploaded to Nexus, let's take a look at SonarCube. You can see that the test results have been published and we have a nice summary available here. As you can see, SonarCube is able to give you details on things such as vulnerabilities in your code and can tell you how to solve them. It also gives you a report on coding size problems. You can see that we also have some information on the unit tests and their coverage. This is because Maven has run JUnit and JCoGo tests and given the reports to SonarCube. On this last view, you can see all the details, such as the technical debt on this project or the documentation completion rate, which is not so great by the way. Let's now jump back to the pipeline, where the upload of the binary is almost finished. We should now be able to see the artifact on Nexus dashboard. Meanwhile, the provisioning of the test infrastructure has already started in a separate job. You can see the instances being created by Terraform. This will take a while. We're already able to see the instances on AWS dashboard. Terraform is now connected to the instances using SSH and is pulling the Docker image from Nexus. The application instances are now running, but Terraform still needs to create the load balancer. It will then wait for it to register the instances, which will take a few minutes. Now that the test instances have been provisioned, Jenkins will start another job running the JMeter stress test. We can access its console and see how it's going. Note that here, I'm using my own computer to benchmark the servers. But what you would do in a real environment is have several slaves sending requests to the servers. 
Right now, the only thing I'm probably benchmarking in is the ability of my own computer to send 10,000 requests at a time, so the results won't be very accurate. The stress test is now finished, and we are able to see the results on the job page. To do this, I'm using Jenkins Performance Plugin. Let's say that these results are satisfied. To have some data to show on AppDynamics, I made the test instances register to the controller. This way, we should be able to see the results of the stress test from here. In general, you would only register the production instances to AppDynamics because test instances are meant to be destroyed right after the tests are finished. You can see that AppDynamics recorded every call made to our application and can give details about each business transaction happening. It is also possible to give specific information on each node of the infrastructure. We've inspected the results of our stress test, but we can also access the application from the browser to see if it looks good. It seems alright. Let's validate this version and deploy it into production. It is now uploading the release version. Let's wait for this step to finish. Once again, we can check that the binary has been successfully uploaded to Nexus. The production servers are now being provisioned. As I'm not updating an already existing infrastructure, Jenkins will begin by creating the instances with Terraform and will then start the container with Ansible. In the meantime, another job has been started to generate the documentation for the new version of the application. Once again, we should be able to see the production servers starting on the AWS console. Here they are. As before, Terraform is waiting for the load balancer to register the instances. Terraform is now done, and Ansible will launch the container. And our power plan is finished. As we can see, another job has already been started to clean the test infrastructure. The only thing it has to do is to use Terraform to destroy the instances. We can also check the generated documentation with Jenkins. Let's now take a look at the Uchiwa dashboard. On this panel, you can see the three production instances that have been registered when they started. Here, there are three checks currently associated with this client. Let's focus on the container check. This check is making sure that the Game of Life container is running. As you can see, it currently is. A handler, which is an automated response to check failure, is attached to this check. If the container was to stop, the handler will send me an email alert. Let's manually stop this container. The container is now stopped and the check is in running state. As you can see, I received an email containing a JSON file with a lot of details on my instance. This could be used to program some advanced reactions to a check failure. 
To finish, let's make sure that our application is running. And everything seems fine. This demo is now over. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you an insight of what DevOps can help your company to achieve. Forest Technologies is one of the leaders in DevOps and IT automation consultancy, with over 12 years of experience and offices in London, Singapore and the US. We can help your company to achieve DevOps. If you'd like to contact us for a DevOps maturity assessment, to receive information about the trainings we deliver or to give feedback about this video, please send an email to hello at firsttechnologies.co.uk. Thank you for watching.